South Sudan only gained independence in the north in 2011, but now the world's youngest country has already slipped into civil war. No outside observers know for sure how the war began. The government claimed that the vice president, Riek Machar, tried to launch a coup against the president, Salva Kiir, and when that failed, fled north to begin the Bush rebellion. The rebels claim, with some accuracy, that the Kiir government has consolidated power into the hands of the dominant Dinka tribe, threatening the transition to true democracy. What is known is that thousands of people have been killed, hundreds of thousands of civilians have fled their homes, and that both sides have committed major human rights abuses, including the murder of civilians along tribal fault lines. South Sudan is an incredibly difficult country to report from, partly due to the complete lack of infrastructure outside the capital, Juba, and partly due to the heavy filming restrictions imposed by the army. An Al Jazeera journalist had just been arrested, then deported, for claiming the rebels were about to take the capital. For days, the government had forbidden us to film almost anything, but then they summoned us to a meeting, which turned out to be a press conference. This is a general security briefing. If there are questions or rumors you want to dispel, they can answer those questions. We are, we are very, very near to both. And there is no fight here. But of course, you, you know, the civilian, those who are, who are not soldiers, they always panic. And, and the telephone is a very dangerous. You see, media, you brought us a very, <laughs> very serious thing. And even myself, I'm either arrested or I have run away. Uh, these are rumors. So there is no fight near here, no, nothing, nothing. There is no a tribe that will make a country. So I want to tell my soldiers, that please refrain from this tribal war. Helpful for everybody, so we see you again. Can we go towards the front lines with your soldiers? So when you recapture war, we can see it. Okay. Let's be in contact with the... No, okay. 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 How far do you want to go? We want to go to as far as possible. <laughs> So that was the press conference, we accidentally gate crashed. The message is pretty clear. There's a lot of rumours swirling around that the rebels were advancing on Juba. According to the generals here, that's not true. And generally they gave a message of peace, of reconciliation, they're saying we're all brothers, we're all South Sudanese, we should leave politics to the politicians, put aside tribal differences, try and get through this. Okay. Finally, we're getting slightly outside Juba on what's clearly a very guided, structured press tour. None of us have any idea where we're actually going, but whatever it is, it's something the army obviously wants us to see. A plainclothes security officer drove on ahead of us, leading us to the village. This seemed a carefully orchestrated PR stunt. The Lokoya community, we always like peace. That is why, even in spite of these uh, classes uh, around southern Sudan, we are praying for the sake of our people. And when we, we side to Salva Kirma with our president. What do you think about the rebels? The, the rebels are our brothers. We hope and wish that they will come and join us. Southern Sudan is one. Uh, we want a Riyadh Machar to come and compromise. The dead bodies are enough. These people who are playing now, they are tired of war. Our people all need peace. After a few minutes, we are ushered back onto the truck for the next stop on the PR tour. Major, what's happening now? Uh, this is a place called uh, Sherikat. Okay. This is the last uh, market. So the situation is normal here. Is that why you've taken us here? To show us that the situation is normal? Yeah, you can go now and ask, no problem. The shop is working. People are working. 
The fighting in Juba may have finished, but things were still far from normal. We're driving through a ghost town. That truck just ahead of us, the MO. They're the moral operations arm, the propaganda arm of the South Sudanese army. They're taking us on this weird and slightly creepy guided tour. I have absolutely no idea what they're trying to show us, what this is about. We stopped here, I don't know why. Finally, they took us to an abandoned district formerly lived in by people from the Nuer tribe. They gave us just a few minutes there to film, watched the whole time by our military escort. According to the UN and the Human Rights Watch, hundreds of Nuer men were massacred here by government troops just two weeks earlier. They left this area because the fighting was here. You see? Yeah. There. Yeah, yeah. But now the people are trying to come back. They will come back because the security is now OK. So these soldiers here are in what used to be the, the newer district of Juba. The newer have all fled. They were hiding in the UN miss base down there. One of the soldiers took us here said many knew we were killed. He wouldn't say who by. If you come and film me here alone, the army arrest you. But the army took us here. They come to show us that everything's OK. How is security now, Lieutenant? I think that's all we're going to get from these guys. They were never going to show us where the bodies were buried. And because we didn't push it, they chose to send us up to the front line. <laughs> 